Okay, so the carrying on machine in this part. Now, stuff's gonna jump a little bit forwards and backwards now, um, because I accidentally deleted one of the videos um, from the folder and I can't get it back. So, you'll notice we came in and we done the top sections, we faced these off, we drilled and tapped, we done our undercut. Um, now I did come in on the other video and I used um, a little 10 mil ball nose tool there and I done a load of step overs to flat off this face which is for the fuel rail. Now it's done the job and it's left a good finish um, and you can see it's already drilled and tapped which will come in a video in a minute because one got deleted so I've skipped this but what I found when I dummy um, fitted the fuel rail, which is currently bolted to this one, you can just see down there, what they've done with a standard fuel rail is just, they've ground off the corners. Now, I've got obviously nothing to do with the fuel rail. If that's what's being fitted, that's what's being fitted. I just get given the sample. Now, where I've done this with the 10 mil ball nose, that radius is too big and the bracket is sort of trying to sit up. And the other thing I noticed is that there's about a degree of difference between this face infusion and this face. So I'm actually coming back in and I'm making this face parallel to this one. Um, like I say, it's about one degree. And I'm gonna come in with a long series, 10 mil end mil with a two mil radius. And that should get right in there and take that bit out a little bit more. So, so for the moment, we have done these and we're gonna come back and we're gonna do them again with a different tool because we need to get rid of some of this um, five mil radius in the corner. So we've got enough stick out there to come down and just take a few passes. And obviously with a ball nose, we had to take a load of step overs. With the flat, we can step over like three, four, five mil, um, whatever we want. So we can come across and just do the contour line across here. So let's run that now. Just put it in the USB in there. So, vf3.nc. Op 7 trunnion. Now we've got tool 11. Now I haven't tried this one yet. Um, might need to put them up a little bit for clearance. I hate you when I get lost on out of sequence now compared to the video. So we'll just slow down the rapids there. Um, right, it's gonna rotate over because I've hand jogged this around. So it wouldn't normally rotate over like that, but I've hand jogged it. So it's out of sequence. Okay, so we're gonna come back in there. I'm going to turn the coolant off. I'm going to 5% rapid. Got the feed rate slowed right down. Now, obviously, I just want to keep checking the clearances here. Now, I'm going to move over to my jog wheel because I've got the feed hold buttons. I want to make sure we're not going to touch it any. Because we've already done a pass on this, I'm not so fussed about there being coolant. close there. Right. You probably can't even see. I'm just going to stop the spindle for a second and just... Close that. 
some of that out of the way. I thought I saw it touch them there, but to be fair, there's no um, nothing there. And you can see that's cleaned that face up there quite nicely. I could potentially, because I've already gone over with the ball nose, it's like there's a little bit at the back. Could take like point one off there. So we're now going to come across the other side, and I'll let it go with Callum. We should be good. Just gonna let him run. He's feeding from the top height. I just kind of play it safe. I could select the, uh, the feed from say five millimeters above the face that we're actually machining, but I normally play it safe. So when it comes and you've got your plunge feed rate, it doesn't plunge from the top of the park straight down, just in case. At a later date, when we know the program's good, I can then bring that um, the feed down to the face that we're actually machining. But I've made my fair share of bumps and tools into parts, costing me not so much money, but a lot of time. So I'd rather go a bit easy. Okay. So, you can see there, we've just got where the angles were different. It's okay in there. It's, um, it's clean right up on that neck, which is pretty similar. Um, I'll have to unbolt this rail, but it's pretty similar to how it's been done on this one. Um, I'm going to unbolt that and we'll sort of give it a dummy fit and see how it looks. Okay, so we've got the fuel rail bolted on. Um, everything clears. You can, if I try and, it's difficult because there's not much light in there, but you can see it clears the contour of the runner there. To use a billet fuel rail at a later date, I'm not too sure. This one just came um, bolted onto that when I was given, and it fits exactly the same. Uh, personally, you'd want us very close on this here. It still allows you to undo it, but it's very close on it. It's almost, if it is, or it's almost touching that cap. I suppose it's not really relevant. The inlet manifold comes down, it's all there. That's gonna be okay. So these surfaces are now good. We're happy with them. I've now all the correct length um, drills. Annoyingly, I was in a rush yesterday doing something else and I ordered them today. Uh, and they're now delivery Monday. So I've got to wait to do carrying on with the drilling um, of these main holes here. And um, even though the fuel rail holes are drilled and tapped, I've ordered the correct length five mil drill and a long series tap because I had to put um, a tap in a collet, in a collet holder, and it's just no good. What we want is we want this tap um, in the proper, wherever I've put it away now, um, we see, there we go, you can see we've got two taps. We've got a short tap, um, M6 in a proper compression tension tap holder, which is what we've done here, but that one would not reach down in here, so we had to use an extension. But I've ordered some long series M6 taps that will go in the proper holder, which is square drive, which means no slippage of the tap, and um, we'll get down there with one tool. So not only that, it frees up a space um, in the carousel for a tool. We're going to stick with a long series spot drill or short normal spot drill in a, a long holder because it's just spotty. Okay, There's so no we're going to carry on um, machining as mentioned before. But what we're going to do now is because we previously in the other videos we broke the long series drill, so we can't carry on drilling the holes first. And just to make life easier, we're actually going to do the counter bores first. Now you'll see these are counter bored in here. And I haven't got long enough tooling or slimline tooling um, to clear this and come in here easily. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put an angle on here that matches um, this face. So the angle will be perpendicular to that face and it'll give me clearance for a tool. Now this was done on a five axis machine, I believe. 
and they probably had shrink fit tooling at a guess. Most people doing five axis will have shrink fit or some really nice, like, tiny slim holders. Now, I haven't got anything small enough to clear this and get down in here. So, the angle that I'm gonna come off is just 25.5 degrees, which is what this face is at. And it's just gonna come, and it's just gonna put a small relief on there. So, it's not gonna look out of place, it's not gonna be detrimental to the part. Um, you probably barely notice. So I'm gonna put that there, just using a 16 mil mm come across and just basically do a contour pass to clear that up. And then that will allow our next tool in this hydraulic long reach holder, which is a 10 mil mm to come down and interpolate, uh, or he's just gonna do a Fusion 360 boring cycle to put the injector count pause in. So we'll do this contour first, and then it will move on to that 10 mil tool and do the count pours. And I've modeled it all up in Fusion and Fusion says it will not touch anything once that bit's taken off the front. So let's go ahead and we'll machine this off. Whether we go further and take any more off for any other cycles, I'm not sure. But for the minute, this gives us clearance for the tool we've got. going to feed hold there, blow a bit of coolant off and show you, so if you see there we've just taken a lick off that backside and we're going to deburr all this by, by hand remember I said, unless we ever get to the point where we do these in one hit on a table, the deburring of these pieces here will be done by hand because I don't want to risk being 0.1 or 0.2 out on the profile because that really will notice on a part and make it look terrible. So now we've given ourselves a bit of a relief here, I'm gonna come and count all these. And I'm hoping it clears, as I've modeled it correctly, Fusion says it's gonna clear. Just like to turn the coolant off and see where we're at. Right. I'll drop my glasses down and actually you can see how close it is in there. And taking that edge off just gave us enough clearance going to stop the spindle there for a sec so we can take a look because you don't want to watch all of them. Okay, so you can see we've done a nice count of all there. We cleared our surfaces here, didn't touch anything and now it's going to go on and do the rest of them. Now I did look into a more slimline tool to get down here but that's as small as I've got 
And the tool to do that, um, it's any smaller than that, it's pretty crazy expensive. So that's the way that I decided to do it, is to just take that edge off there. Because it doesn't affect in any way, as mentioned, the other section bolting down onto here. So I'm gonna leave it like that. We'll carry on and do all four count bores, and then I'll show you afterwards. So I'll bring you back in a minute. Okay, so we're looking at machining the injector um, seat area now. So I haven't got a long enough tool to orientate the Z-axis with this face and come down this way like I did with the fuel rail mounts you saw previously, because we've got to clear this again. When we're done here, we're going in between these. Um, when we've done the boring operation, we just miss these by like the tiniest amount. So when we want to follow this lower contour here, uh, we get too close and it would actually rub and um, gouge into this material here. I can't take any more of this off. So someone had suggested this a while ago, I can't remember if it was via Messenger or via the YouTube comments about why not rotate um, the part past 90 and sort of basically side minute. So that's what we're doing. So we've going to invert the part, so the base plate's going to be sort of flat across here. We've got plenty of clearance for our tool, although you can't see anything in the machine. I've orientated it and checked the tool length to sort of check it clears, but you can't see what you're doing. So I'm going to have to walk around the side of the machine with the feed hole and just make sure everything looks okay. Um, so what we've done, is we've done this as a trace tool path and we basically drew along here and then the contour and drew a straight line on the contour straight line contour and we drew it on the same plane as the flat face of the injector mount there so then we've done it as the trace path is an open path even though I've drawn it as a full box we've only gone up and over these bits and in between so it doesn't touch anything else it starts at one end finishes at the other I've done it as um, one pass because there was only a millimetre roughly on this face to take off and it should, I did program it first off with a ball nose uh, which I've suppressed there but it left too big a radius so this is a 10mm tool with a 2mm um, rad and hopefully you can see where the green is going so this is the model and you can see it isn't gouging in too much but it does um, does just take it back there so I might be able to do a, a minor stock to leave or I may end up um, leaving it as it is but that is my plan so I'm going to quickly post that out so you can see it's going to orientate to minus 114.76 now it's actually minus 114.5, but I kind of um, eyeballed the Z-axis orientation. So I'm a little bit off there, but that will be fine. So let's copy this in to a USB. Every time I go to do a video, the compressor seems to kick in. I don't know if any of you guys are running pass machines maybe, but they just I actually yeah. realised I've got a tool, uh, I've got a much shorter 12mm ball nose um, or 12mm end mill with a 2mm radius on it as well. So we've changed it and we're going to do it in step downs because the trace tool path, you can't do step overs. If not, I'd go full depth and step over, but I'm going to do it, um, take a little bit longer and I'm going to do it in 2mm step downs. And then what we're going to do is we've duplicated the tool path and we're going to do minus 0.25 axially and minus 0.25 radially to hopefully clean that one up. This first one may not clean up as well. Um, if needs be, I'll take a bit off for this, but as long as the rest of it doesn't vibrate, obviously this is a test part and that won't happen on the um, finished article. So I'll show you this tool. So we've got a bigger holder it's still got plenty enough clearance. It's got exactly the same reach. It's just a slightly bigger diameter. Um, it might even be the same diameter, to be fair. But this is a 12 mil, two mil rad tool. And obviously you look at the stick out on that one compared to the stick out on this. Now, 
This tool was only previously used for doing this face and I'd put it in a longer holder to do this bit specifically what we're gonna do now and it didn't work. So now this 10 mil can go back in a short stubby holder. Um, so we'll have a stubby holder with that much stick out. So it's gonna be better all round. I'll change the tools. When I get to the final process of doing the finished articles, I will, um, I'll change the tools and the orders and get everything a bit more efficient. So it's gonna take about six or seven minutes. It's not the most efficient and fast tool path and there's probably better ways, but for me, currently, this is how I'm doing it. I don't even think the first pass barely touches. Okay, so I've decided to open up the end window, just to get a bit of footage. Obviously the wall thickness of these is massive, but it's not that bad to be fair. You've got a little bit of vibration, it seems to be in the same spot on each of them. Not at the start, just once it's in there. Um, but it's worked, obviously. But I'd like that finish to be a tiny bit better. Only tiny, I actually don't mind that. Um, obviously being the 12 mil tool, it's bigger than initially thought we went minus 0.25 so on the next ones i wouldn't have to go minus 0.25 i could leave it just at the face value i can do stock to leave and then bring it to zero um so this face i think we'll get a better finish if we now go ahead and run one pass again but don't touch on the floor just do one pass around here so yeah I'm not going to worry about that now. We'll leave that now. When we come to do... That's my headphones gone around the corner. When we come to do the final pieces, I'm going to get... Um, probably... I might go down to... A 10mm tool or an 8mm tool to make these a little bit smaller. Um, but the thing is with stuff like this, because they're, because it's all symmetrical, it's just a tool path, it's just a tool mark, you know, it's not bad, it's not an ugly accidental gouge, it's just a tool path. But what we'll do is, when I come back, I won't do a minus 0.25 on the finished items, I'll do the first pass and I'll leave 0.25, I think, um, or leave zero axially, but radially, I'll leave 0.25, and then when I come back, I'll finish off of the floor, and I'll finish up these, and then we won't get that little bit of chatter. Um, and then that will be okay. I'll be happy with that. So we're getting there. Obviously, we've still got a bit more to do. I can't come in and drill these counterbores yet annoyingly because we've got to wait for our drills to turn up. I get impatient and I'm going to have a go at this. This is an eight mil drill, only 70 mil flute in an ER11 collet. 
um, or ER16 call it, sorry, slimline one, into my ER32, so it's pretty rigid. Um, these aren't the best, so it might give a bit of run out, but I'm gonna try it. I know, maybe I shouldn't, I might live to regret that. But you can see where we flat bottomed him, flat bottomed the pockets um, for the injector O-rings. We've now done a spot drill in each of them. Obviously this one's already got a hole, so that one may be a bit iffy. And we're gonna have a go at drilling these. Now we've got plenty of clearance um, on our length. We should be fine drilling right through to here. So we're gonna give it a go. What's the worst that can happen, he says. Just reset, back to there. Go past our spot drill. Because it does a safe restart, it goes back to the previous tool and the previous op to make sure it's got all the offsets correct. Now I've modelled that collet. It shouldn't touch. And it hasn't. It's drilling okay. Just drilled, done the hole, didn't sound too bad, not saying it sounded the best, but I can't see if we've gone right through there. Let's reset, get out of the way, bring it back to us. Let's turn it over because we'll see. There you go. So our hole drilled right the way through. You can just sort of see in there the hole at the bottom where it went through. And that looked and sounded okay. So we still got the long series drill coming for Monday for when we're doing this properly. But that works for now because of my being impatient and wanting to get it done. So let's go back. restart our program <coughs> when I turned down the shoulder of that little ER16 holder um, I actually put it in the lathe and you can see the run out when I spun the shank up in the lathe turn down the OD of the threaded cap to make sure it had clearance. So I know it's a little bit booky and I'm hoping that a long series drill on its own would be a better option. What I've set it to now as well Let it run. You can see a bit of load on the drill, but hardly anything. It's this last one that I wonder because 
if the hull went off first time round, there's potential for this very last hull to cause this to break. Potential. Still not showing too much though. So we've got our holes drilled. Without waiting till Monday. And you can see we went back over this surface, um, got rid of our chatter by doing a finish pass. So next time we'll leave, stop to leave and then do a finish pass, so that's good. All our holes are drilled through. Um, I am gonna, because of clearance issues, I'm gonna chamfer these holes by hand, um, just with a deburr tool or either a counter sink in a drill. I'm not gonna worry about doing that in a program because that's not even a 10 second job to quickly do those. So we are finished, I think. Externally, we are finished in every way, I shape think or I'll form. leave this video here, I'll whack it up. It start to be just, um, People probably more interested working out how to do trunnions and get them aligned and the issues I've got with that, that's more useful to other people. This is now just something for you guys to watch if you're interested. So I'll break the videos up a little bit more so they're not too long for you. So we'll leave this where it is now and I will do the final drilling operations and I will do the internal bores as one last video for these runners. And then what we'll do is later down the line, I'll do your video comparing um, the first initial test piece to the first, um, what's hopefully the first good finished piece. So yeah, once again, cheers for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like the content and we'll see you again soon.